Deputy Mick Barry and Breed Smith, who are sharing seven and a half minutes. Is that agreed? Thank you, Kai uh, Last year, the European Commission Digital Scorecard Report ranked Ireland 19th of EU states for quality broadband access. We have some of the worst served regions of Europe for broadband and rank 42nd in the world for high speed internet access despite having the second highest customer costs in the European Union. The government attempt to portray Ireland on the international stage as a modern country that is open for business to all sorts of multinational companies. Yet in reality, in many respects, Ireland is in the dark ages. We have 1,300 primary schools, 600 business parks, and 40% of the population who cannot access decent high-speed broadband, mostly in rural areas. This is a major issue, and it's estimated to cost 10,000 jobs annually to rural communities. There are some parts of the country where, which have yet to get broadband. Meanwhile, in cities and urban areas, commercial operators can offer very high-speed broadband because it's profitable for them to do so. Now, Cahirlock, in 1999, the state privatised and sold off Aircom and removed the ability of the state to intervene and build the necessary infrastructure to keep our telecommunications and broadband modern. Deputy Timmy Dooley said earlier in the debate that there was a consensus in this House in 1999. That is not correct. If he was talking about his own party and the Fine Gael party, there was a consensus between the Conservative parties. But there were voices in the House who spoke out against it, one of them belonged to the Socialist Party deputy, Joe Higgins, who warned that the privatisation of Aircom would be a disaster for all concerned. Uh, and it was. For the almost 600,000 ordinary shareholders who got burned, for the workers who saw jobs, wages and conditions slashed, and for the general public who have seen services, including this service, decline. The only people that it wasn't a disaster for were the vulture funds like Valencia and ESOT, who asset stripped the company down to the bone, such as when they sold off Aircell, walked off with huge sums of money, didn't invest hardly a cent, and left the company with huge debts. In fact, the state had to step in to invest through different programmes to make up for the lack of private sector investment. And our disastrous broadband system is the price that's being paid for that decision. It's like the fellow who's a bit depressed, who takes a drink because of it and then gets more depressed. Uh, as a result of the drink. The state has privatised, uh, the situation has been made worse and are now using that uh, uh, situation to excuse even further privatisation. Aircom at the time of its privatisation had assets worth eight, eight and a half billion, was a leader in technology, was innovative and was investing. Had it been maintained, it would have invested and delivered broadband across the country. As a state-owned company, uh, not operating on a for-profit basis. That's how we uh, electrified uh, rural Ireland through the ESB in decades past. But now the state is having to intervene to provide high-speed internet connections for more than 900,000 people through this plan because the market and the private sector has failed. Privatisation and the private sector, as we've seen through Aircom, failed to deliver basic services to people. In conclusion, the Minister has announced plans to sell off and privatise the infrastructure. This will result in another handoff, a handover of taxpayers' money to private profiteers. We oppose the privatisation of the service. It must be kept in public ownership. The state should invest and build the infrastructure directly, rather than oh, tendering it out to private companies to build, run for 25 years, and then own. Uh, Deputy Bruce Smith, you have 